Oh, it is nice coffee, huh? Mmm. You gonna clap? Yeah, no. okay, just uh, let me give you a <clears throat> So today I had the idea of making a Dutch baby pancake. A Dutch baby is basically a German pancake that's not like your normal pancake. You, you make it in a cast iron pan, you bake it, it gets all enormous and crazy looking and then it kind of deflates and <clears throat> you squeeze lemon over it. It's quite simple to make, but I mean I don't want to jinx myself and then fail. And we're going to just switch it up a little bit and make an apple, apple Dutch baby. So. First thing you do, I'll wash my apples real quick. They're organic, but you still gotta wash them or Justin will get mad. I'm just gonna slice these apples and keep them in nice, really big slices. Most recipes that I found for a Dutch baby, um, pancake that with apples only calls for one apple but I'm gonna go two because I think it's really a nice treat to have fresh fruit in there I've never never had it like that before um, but I tried making it once and it was really good so hopefully it comes out really good again so we're gonna just turn on our stove and most recipes will call for butter I'm sure it would be delicious. We're gonna use this raw organic coconut oil. Before you do anything, preheat your oven to 425. That's important. I'm putting in like two pretty generous tablespoons of this super delicious coconut oil. In the meantime, I guess I can get the batter going. I need some flour. Be right back. Justin's been, Justin's been going gluten free. I hate when people drive fast in our sure. neighborhood. It's so irritating. I, um, but so this is really cool. We've never, we don't really know of this brand, but just Justin found it. And it's like this, I don't know, it's cool. It's a, this gluten-free, non-GMO flour, and it's just got really neat ingredients. Rice flour, tapioca, flaxseed, quinoa, buckwheat, you know, all kinds, millet, just all kinds of different flowers in there. You would think it really wouldn't work as all-purpose flour, but so far, all the recipes I've used it for, it's kind of amazing how good it tastes. And so, so yeah, we're eating less of the all-purpose wheat flour these days. But anyway, let me wipe it real quick. Okay. My apples are sauteing. It's three quarter cups of flour, whatever kind of flour you want to use. I just level it off. So as we do this, we'll stir our apples. Keep multitasking. Also, all the recipes I see say to add like a tablespoon of brown sugar to the apples and that would be so delicious, you know, brown sugar is really yummy and it gets things caramelized, but I also find that you don't really need it. Apples are sweet and um, cinnamon also has its own like natural earthy sweetness if you just actually let it shine and you don't overpower it with sugar. And so that's what I'm gonna do. Now that these apples are softening and then they shrink down, that's why I didn't wanna just use one. I'm just gonna add a whole bunch of cinnamon. And I know like we don't you know, cinnamon is a spice, but it really does have its own natural sweetness. And so between that and the sweetness of the fruit, I think we're good. And you're gonna add maple syrup to your pancake anyway. Isn't that beautiful? Doesn't it feel like so rustic, like you're in a cabin in the woods and like some grandma's making this for you? That's how I feel when I look at it. The batter always calls for whole milk, and so it's like three quarters, so equal amount of flour to whole milk. I don't have whole milk, so I'm gonna use this macadamia nut milk, and I'm just really gonna hope, really, really hope that it works. If not, I'll be really sad at the end of this episode, and I won't hide it. 
Okay, I'm gonna turn the heat off of our apples. Keep it on, but turn off the heat and let it carry over from that hot pan and keep cooking that way. Do this side. Remove these apples. Shit. Cool. Only one casualty. That's why we put two apples. Now, what I'm going to do with this pan is I'm going to put two more generous, I'm pretty generous with coconut oil, generous tablespoons of coconut oil. Probably should have wiped it out first to get the cinnamon off in case the cinnamon burns. I don't know. I think it'll be fine. That's kind of a lot of oil, but coconut oil is good for you, right? And then I'm going to put this in our super hot oven, 425. I'm just putting this, this oil pan into the oven. And that's the beauty of cast iron. You have to do this. You have to do this recipe in a cast iron pan. Don't do it in anything else. Like you, you're, it's not a Dutch baby if you're not doing it in a cast iron pan. So now we're heating up the walls of the pan. We're heating up everything so that when we hit it with our batter, it just is already getting like a nice... Um, golden bottom and I don't know just starting the process off high heat and right so this is what did I say three quarters cup flour three quarters cup milk we're using macadamia nut milk and super whole grain gluten-free flour and now we're going for three organic eggs we have some wonderful friends that have their own chickens and always give us their organic eggs um, same friends we often go diving with and same fish that you'll see us cooking with it's just a really awesome community that we have in that sense I'm really gonna try and whisk this extra because I, I think I want to incorporate air in there because if you whisk egg whites a lot it'll get air and it'll puff up and so I don't know if that's why a Dutch baby puffs up when you bake it, but that's the whole point. It's supposed to. And I don't know if that was partially dependent on using real milk, but since I'm using macadamia nut milk, I just really want to ensure that it puffs. Vanilla extract, that's what we're going to put next. You, I used to only use like real vanilla bean pods that I'd bring back from French Polynesia and you'd scrape scrape the vanilla seeds out of the pods but then I ran out so now I'm just using extract but if anyone goes to Tahiti and wants to bring me back some delicious Tahitian vanilla I will not say no oh salt salt's always an important thing so it's just some Himalayan pink salt I don't know just like a pinch especially because we're not using butter we're using the coconut oil I feel like salt's extra important to put in because, you know, if you're using salted butter, you already get that nice saltiness, which we don't even notice usually when we're eating sweet things, but just a little bit of salt also brings out the sweetness so much more. Okay, I'm gonna get my pan out. Hasn't been in there that long, but hopefully it's nice and hot. Careful, careful. And now I'm gonna put these apples back in. Oh good, it's hot. Kind of push them towards the center. And now I'm gonna pour this batter on in there too. Try and spread my coconut oil around. Again, that was a lot of coconut oil, but it's good for you. So we'll roll with it. Okay, and now we're gonna put this right back in the oven. And we're gonna check on it in about 12 minutes and hope, hope, hope that it, it's coming out like this beautiful crazy looking kind of like pretty ugly um type of appetizing look which i just love so fingers crossed that it works okay i feel like it's been i said i said to wait 12 minutes 
we didn't look at what time it was so i think it's been over 12 minutes i think we've been looking at like 15 maybe not quite anyway taking a peek and it looks beautiful see how it puffed up honestly i think if you use like regular flour and re real milk it would get way crazy big which is fantastic but um i'm really happy with just how that looks I kind of want it a little more brown on the top, so I'm just going to switch it to broil. How do I do that? Stop. Broil. High. And um, just let that go for like not even a minute, maybe a minute. So the thing about broiling is that you have to really be fast because if not, it'll burn. What I'm doing now, I'm going to just cut slices of a lemon. This is it's a lemon. I made Justin um go ride his bike to our neighbor's house this morning when i said let's make a dutch baby and then we didn't have lemon so i sent him there lemons are key for dutch babies it's just such a i don't know such a nice touch to a pancake that i think us americans don't don't do enough of and i'm going to pull our dutch baby out that looks gorgeous and so it's gonna be like a really nice custardy pancake. And I love how, just how, I don't know, awkward and uneven and rustic it is. It will start to kind of sink back down. Um, like I said, sometimes it can get really big and sink back down, but it's just, it's delicious. Justin's from Minnesota, so Justin's mom always sends us like legit maple syrup made by her friends. And so we're gonna use only the best on our Dutch baby. All right. And here is our Dutch baby. Here's our other Dutch baby. If you like butter, putting butter all over this would just be amazing tasting. If you don't do butter, don't worry about it. But yeah, let's try it. And so you can see that it's really flattening out. Just using a wooden spatula. Looks like a pastry almost, like a dessert for breakfast. But also remember that, you know, we didn't even add any sugar to this at all. So it, it tastes like a pastry and everything. This one is a pretty, pretty, pretty healthy, healthy pancake to tell you the truth. And so, wow, look at that. Okay, and then I'll squeeze a lemon. It's crazy how good lemon tastes on this. I'm gonna get a fork. I just think this is such a, a super delightful breakfast or brunch. And it's, you know, the lemon really adds a lot to it. It kind of brings out just like the tartness of the apples. And I don't know, it just, um, it just brings this flavor that you really wouldn't expect to put with maple syrup, but it's delicious. Yep. <laughs> it's custardy inside. And so it's really puffy and brown and the inside just like moist and custardy. And then the apples are just excellent. Between me and Justin, we will eat this entire pan of Dutch baby in one sitting and never feel guilty about it. To be honest, I feel like using using regular milk, maybe like regular flour as well, you would have gotten like a really dramatic puffy pancake, which is so fun to pull out of the oven and it's just like, oh my God, it looks like something exploded. It almost looks like a huge mistake. And then you bring it out and then it kind of deflates and settles and it's a, it's a little more dramatic than, than this one was, but, but I don't know, but I'm, I'm eating this one right now made with you know, that super healthy, gluten-free, you know, crazy quinoa mix flour and macadamia nut milk, just because we were using what we had. I honestly don't miss a thing. I think it, it tastes excellent. Like, I, I would never eat this and be like, oh, it's freaking health food. Like, give me the real deal. When you eat this, you just taste like it's um, rustic and decadent and you're indulging I chose to do a Dutch baby because growing up in Hawaii, you don't ever see Dutch babies too much. 
I found a recipe when I was a kid. I loved to cook as a kid. I found a recipe in the Joy of Cooking cookbook, which is like this blue book my mom had. They didn't really even have pictures that I remember. It was like pages that were thinner than the Bible and more words in the dictionary. And But you could look up anything in in the index and then find the recipe. And I looked up pancakes and I found one that said Dutch baby. And I was like, ooh, that sounds interesting. <clears throat> and so I looked it up, tried to make it, and I totally thought I screwed up. When I pulled this pan out of the oven, <laughs> it was like this huge crazy lopsided thing I was like well that didn't work and then I remember my mom came in you know they let us cook when we were really young and was just like so proud of me I'm just like what did you just make and um and it kind of you know reboosted my self-esteem and I kept following the recipe squeezed some lemon on it and tried it and she had just thought it was the most delicious thing she had and um and then I realized that that's what a Dutch baby is and Again, we don't we don't really see it a whole lot in Hawaii, and so it's just something that I think is pretty special and cool and um, really fun to make. You know, like I said, I could do this as a kid, um, but again, my parents weren't the safest parents, so I did a lot of stuff that other kids couldn't do. <laughs> but I lived. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch our little videos, and if you like them, please do subscribe because we're gonna keep them coming.